So I have a lot of favorite possessions. Um, they would be things like books, um, family heirlooms that include furniture, pottery, and some of the books. Um, music, my mother's music collection, my music collection. But to narrow it down, I'd have to say my favorite all-time possession would be my tool collection, which is actually uh, three generations worth of tools. Some owned by my grandmother, Carmelita Hinton, some owned by my aunt, Jean Hinton Rosner, and then some owned by my father, William Hinton, and then some that I purchased on my own for various projects. So, yeah, that's how I would narrow it down. What works of art inspire me? Another difficult question because there's so many works of art that feed into what I do and that I've been inspired by from a very early age, um, given that my grandmother had a house full of artwork, a large 200-year-old farmhouse full of artwork, and I used to stay with her every weekend and... I was always staring at all the artwork. <laughs> um, so, but I'm going to narrow it down. I have a couple of categories. Um, so in the modern art category, I would say Willem de Kooning, the abstract expressionist Willem de Kooning, um, would be one of my favorite artists. Um, I don't have a work of his narrowed down, but just his general approach and the sort of dynamic immediate expression of it and the way he handles the paint. Yes, it's about, you know, expression of concepts, ideas, thematics, but it's also about the paint itself, the quality of the paint, the juiciness of it, the colors merging into one another and so on and so forth. Um, and just the whole lifestyle. Like, for, ex for example, when you read some of his writings, he talks about being a studio painter as a lifestyle in its own. You get up, you're facing a blank canvas, you deal with the blank canvas, you express your emotions on the blank canvas, you grapple with the blank canvas, you you turn it around, you turn it the other way while you work on another one. Um, you might have 10 going at the same time. You rotate around, you turn one back over and realize, okay, this painting will be done uh, with just one more stroke of red over here in the upper right. Um, and that's your lifestyle. Like, that is your... Um, what's the word? Your, that's, that's your challenge. Like, that is your challenge. And you can see it in the painting. You can see the struggle inherent in the painting. You can see the, the sort of life force coming of that grappling with the paint, the composition, the meaning so on and so forth. Anyway, this is getting very long-winded, but... Um, and then that ties into another favorite art form of mine, which really shows up in all of the art that I do, even though it's not that obvious anymore, and that would be traditional Chinese painting. Um, I studied traditional Chinese painting um, when I was still a teenager, before I actually went to American art schools, and somehow there's a connection for me between traditional Chinese painting and abstract expressionism in the immediacy, in the dynamic contrasts that are inherent in the work, uh, the life force that comes through in the work. Um, so these things are not um, exclusive of one another. I feel that they are, I like them for, the, for similar reasons. Because I studied traditional Chinese painting back in the early 80s when I was a teenager still, um, and it is such a strict discipline and the way it's taught, um, it's skill focused. Um, it's kind of a paradox because it's so skill focused, but the end result is after much practice, you end up with complete freedom of expression in the moment and the, the techniques and principles in it um, pretty much show up in everything that I've done ever since I was studying in China. So I guess you could say it's inspiring to me, but it's also just embedded in the way that I do things because of the way they taught me and the, the fact that it's really um, 
I really absorbed it uh, because of the repetition and the, the strict discipline that the teachers ingrained in, in the students, myself and the Chinese students in the art school in Peking, in Beijing. I guess the thing that inspires me the most about traditional Chinese painting is just that raw, organic power and movement um, in the work, especially of an older master. Um, after practicing the skill for years and years, you can see it's sort of like a meditation in itself. It exudes the power of qi, the life force, or the breath of life. Um, I guess that's what attracts me the most. Upon contemplation, that's what attracts me the most to it. A major light bulb moment for me would be being in the studio and struggling with some aspect of an artwork, whether it be um, color, thematics, composition, um, and then having it come to me later uh, as I'm falling asleep when I've stopped my work for that day. Um, so it's a major light bulb moment because it changed my whole perception of the self or myself um, because it made me realize that I'm in a collaboration here with something much larger than me. And so it was really the onset of my, um, I guess you'd call it just awareness of what I call the unseen dimensions, um, the mysterious unseen dimensions. You could call it the fourth dimension, you could call it the spirit world, um, different cultures call it different things, but I'd say that's the number one light bulb moment in my life, and it's still taking place, and I'm still always amazed by it. I think it's fascinating. My number one guilty pleasure would have to be watching old reruns and sitcoms from the 70s, like um, Columbo, All in the Family, and Barney Miller. I guess what I'd like to be doing most right now would be building things with my tools in a large barn studio with plenty of space um, where I'd have at least 10 projects going on simultaneously. And um, they'd probably be mixed media projects. And I'd have, like I said, I'd have my tools out. I'd also have my paints out and some sewing materials. I might have my printer going. I'd be in heaven. And then I'd be in an, in an environment, um, maybe out in the woods somewhere, with some acreage where when I get tired of working in the studio or I get stuck, I would just go out. I would just go outside. I'd go swimming, fishing, hiking, camping. Um, I'd have friends come with me, family and friends, visiting. Uh, we'd have dances, music, folk dance, square dance, traditional dance, modern, just dance, dance, just dance to some soul music, dance to some rock, dance to some reggae, dance to some world music. Um, not sure about dancing to jazz, even though jazz is one of my favorite forms of music, which is usually on when I'm in creative mode. Also, world music is also is on a lot when I'm in creative mode, um, which is very danceable. Most most of my favorite world music I would consider very danceable. But th that's what I would like to be doing. All those, all the above. I know it's a long list, but <sighs> I guess I just have a hard time narrowing things down sometimes. I love so many things. <laughs>